this morning where a vehicle uh, ran uh, into a group of uh, pedestrians, people gathered on the street corner, resulting in several injuries. Uh, the uh, driver then got out and used a weapon to cut uh, several people who were then transported to local hospitals. I'm here today with um, uh, two people who were primarily involved in the response. That's our chief of police and, and our public, director of public safety and also our chief medical officer. Let me say first that I want to give our, um, our thoughts and prayers and hopes and wishes for speedy recovery to all those who were injured. We um, uh, prepare for situations like this, but always hope never to have have one, and so we're going to be able to go and visit uh, the people who were injured a little bit later on this afternoon. But uh, I just want to tell uh, them all and their families how much we um, are looking forward to their full and complete recovery. Uh, second, I want to uh, commend our OSU police and the other police agencies who responded. You'll find within minutes the situation in Cape something that something was very uh, unfortunate from being very much worse. Let me now, for specific details, give you to our director of public safety, safety uh, Monica Mall. Monica. Hi. We'll have. More details for you later, but I could go, please. Yes, we at West 19th Avenue, west of college, on the North Academic Campus, in front of Watts Hall. Around 9:52 a.m., the emergency dispatch center got a report that a vehicle had struck pedestrians. At 9:53, an OSU PD officer called out on the radio that shots were fired. He engaged a suspect who had gotten out of the vehicle after hitting pedestrians. The suspect cut multiple individuals. The officer engaged the suspect and shot and killed the suspect. The first Buckeye alert went out at 9.55 to alert the campus community that there was an emergency. Many officers from various different jurisdictions all over the county and outside the county responded immediately. By 11 a.m., the shelter in place notification was lifted and the law enforcement personnel in the area continue to investigate multiple other things. There are a few buildings that are still closed. We don't have any reports of anything else. We believe the threat was ended when the officer engaged the suspect. We're very fortunate that an OSU PD officer was there and took quick action. Uh, and we believe that injuries were minimized as a result of that. We will continue probably to have an active crime scene throughout the rest of the day and we'll have more updates for you later on those things. As I said, we do have a few buildings that are still shut down just as a precaution as we go through and sweep those. But we do believe that the, the threat ended right when the officer engaged the suspect. We'd like to have Andy Thomas also come in and give uh, uh, information on the convention, on the condition of the, uh, the people who were injured and we'll get back to you. Pastor. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Andrew Thomas. I'm Chief Medical Officer for the Medical Center. Uh, we received a uh, number of wounded individuals here uh, at Ohio State. We also received uh, word from our colleagues uh, at Grant and at Riverside that they had received wounded, wounded individuals. We actually had great collaboration and coordination between the, the systems when it comes to events like this. We trained for these events. Uh, here at Ohio State, we received five wounded individuals from the scene two with uh, stab wounds and two with wounds related to being hit by the car. Um, and we've just received a, a fifth victim who was actually hiding in place as uh, they had been directed to do by the Buckeye Alert, uh, who actually just uh, arrived here at the medical center not that long ago and her injuries are still being assessed. Uh, there were two uh, individuals with um, lacerations that were taken to Grant Hospital downtown. I'm told by my colleagues there that both of those individuals are doing well with not, not with life-threatening injuries, as well two motor vehicle uh, accident victims that were taken to Riverside. And I'm told similarly those two individuals are doing well, but I don't have any more information on those folks. So. Was one of the people injured, was the officer injured? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, I'm a no. chief of, not, not that I'm aware of. The officer is no. not injured? No. The officer is okay. not injured. What would they stand with? Mike or Chevy with? I'll let the chief or chief and the chief of public safety please, comment chief. on that. Uh, let me just start from the top and maybe it will answer some of your questions. About 9.52 a.m., a male suspect drove a vehicle over the curb west 19th, west of College Avenue, struck pedestrians. He exited the vehicle and used a butcher knife to start cutting pedestrians. Our officer was on scene in less than a minute, and he ended the situation less than a minute. He engaged the suspect, and he eliminated the threat. The suspect is DOA. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. I want to thank the officers for doing a great job. They, they did what they were trained to do. 
We have a lot of agencies here that are assisting us, Columbus Police, Columbus Fire. There were nine people transported to the hospitals, eight in stable condition, one in critical condition. Uh, we have a lot of other agencies assisting us here, the State Patrol, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, FBI, ATF. We are making sure that we do everything we can to investigate this very thoroughly and not leave any uh, hole unturned. Is the suspect of any other weapons? It's an ongoing investigation. We've recovered a, a butcher knife. Uh, the suspect is DOA. Is he an OSU student? That we will be able to provide you additional information when we have a, another press conference later. The investigation is still ongoing. Chief, was this a planned thing? Was this, did this seem to be planned? And any indication this could be a terror attack? It's, it's too early to say. The only thing that you can say, based upon common knowledge, that this was done on purpose, to go over the curb and strike pedestrians and then get out and start striking them with a knife. That's, that, that was on purpose. Did the suspect say suspects? anything to the police officers? Uh, ongoing investigation. Are there uh, other I, suspects? As far as we know, there was one suspect, and that suspect is DOA. There were rumors of a second, second suspect, and we searched the Lane Avenue garage, and we could not find a, another suspect. We believe that there was one suspect, and we have that suspect. Was there a fire alarm pulled before this, and that's why some of the students were out on the sidewalk? Uh, earlier today, there was a, a gas leak at a building, and so Columbus Fire was on scene checking that, and it was a vowel. Which building? Uh, that was, I believe, Watt Hall. The one at uh, West 19th in college. So, do we think that has any role in this at all? Still under investigation. What can you say about the injuries? What type of injuries? <coughs> Maybe are Andy would speak a little bit more about sure. that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> there were multiple injuries uh, related to lacerations or cuts, most likely, as Chief said, from the, the stab wounds from the butcher knife. Then there were a number of people that had orthopedic and other soft tissue injuries related to being hit by the car initially. Uh, it's our understanding uh, from the other hospitals, and it's our knowledge here that none of the individuals appear to have life-threatening injuries at this time. Do they have to have surgery? Um, one, ha actually two, two. The if they had surgery. Yeah, yeah, two have completed surgery at this point here, mainly for orthopedic issues. Are they students, faculty, staff? Uh, we're going to uh, release more information with the university at a later time. Talk about how you called for staff to come to the hospital. Talk about that. Uh, it, you know, we saw them arriving to, to hang, sleeves rolled up, ready to go. Yeah, so we have a process uh, that's actually university wide. Uh, when the Buckeye Alert goes out, we jump into action. Um, the, uh, the active shooter protocol is, is something that went out across campus, but also we internally have what's called a code yellow or disaster drill. Uh, we immediately made phone calls to key individuals, both the emergency department, our surgeons, our nurses, our respiratory therapists, and people just descend. We train for this. We work with the other hospitals in the city and the Central Ohio Trauma System to train for exactly these types of events. But I, I can't tell you how proud I am uh, to work here at the university and um, to see my colleagues uh, come together in a moment that all of us would uh, really uh, hate to ever have happen on any campus, much less our own. Um, but uh, it was great to see the response, and, and I'm glad there were people were not any further injured than they were. Dr. Drake, back to yeah. the mics. Um, if you could talk a little bit about uh, you know the the mood on campus now, and and you just come back from Thanksgiving break. This has got to be a tough time. We can see it on the faces of students here. Yes, this is a, uh, obviously a tragic situation and, and something that, as Andy was saying earlier, we prepare for every year. We, our students, our faculty, our staff are all trained uh, because we've seen uh, things like this happen around the country. And uh, the best that we can do is to be prepared and then respond appropriately. I didn't want to say that we were uh, uh, so grateful that our police were there on the scene, able to neutralize the situation, that the injuries were not more severe than they were, and that, as you understand, people have been to the hospital already, treated and released in some cases, operated on, but out of the operating room um, already in other cases. So we're pleased that those injuries aren't any uh, more serious. I'll be able to go and visit um, uh, those who were injured a little bit later on this afternoon. What do you hope so. to say to them? What I say to patients, um, uh, regardless of circumstances, that we're here for them and we want uh, to do everything we can to help them have a full and complete recovery as quickly as, as possible and just let them know that we care about them as people as well as, as patients. How do you assure students, parents, that when campus reopens, they'll be safe when they come back? You know, we all do what we can to be as safe as we possibly can and we all have the normal safety pr protocols in place and we all live uh, uh, with the fear that things like this can happen to us. And so but by being diligent and focusing, we believe we can be as 
safe as possible. And, and again, with our safety personnel and officers here to respond and help protect us, we're pleased that this was no uh, more serious than it could have been. Talk what, about next you, steps. what do you plan to do about classes? Uh, did you cancel classes? Or? We canceled classes today. This was quite disrupted this morning, and we wanted, even though the uh, situation appeared to be neutralized relatively rapidly or very rapidly, uh, we wanted to give the police a chance to begin their investigation. And so we held people in place until we felt that the campus was entirely safe and secure. Please, that that was the case. But now we've uh, disrupted the schedule for half a day. It's um, uh, emotionally draining and quite frightening. And so we wanted to say that this is a, a good day to take a uh, to step back from classes, um, uh, uh, sort of uh, get our footing, and then uh, open again tomorrow. Sir, can somebody speak to the nature of the alert that went out that said run, fight? hide or something to that effect. Is that a normal alert? Or yeah, so we, there's, we have a, a protocol that we rehearse for what one should do if one engages a, an active shooter. And what we had heard at first, what I heard at first, was that there were shots fired on campus and therefore the active shooter protocol was going to be put in place, which is to do as much as possible to protect people, which is to not engage, uh, to find some place to be safe, and to hide in place while the professionals arrive to neutralize the situation. So the first thing, our first order of business then was to make the campus safe and secure and that happened as you heard within minutes and then we investigate and then we have information that lets people know that it's safe uh, to resume normal or, or most normal activities we allow that to go um, uh, that information to be shared and we do that through text messaging and it it spreads uh, rapidly throughout the campus can you repeat your name I'm sorry. yes it's michael drake yeah. run hide fight is an ongoing training program uh, run hide fight is an ongoing training program and so when you see that reference in an alert message that rings a bell with members of the campus community that have been through the training talk about there was a student hiding so something must be getting through as the uh, medical professionals talked to that yeah. uh, there was the, a girl hiding inside the public safety team has done a lot of training across the community and again that's why they use those keywords in an alert to remind folks of what their options are for any violent intruder, whether it be someone with a gun or a knife like today, those same principles apply. So those are kind of keywords that we use to remind people of their training. And Mayor Genther, is, yeah, he was, if you just say what words did you have to say for the community? Well, obviously, this is a city made up of great neighborhoods, and we're in one of uh, our greatest neighborhoods. Uh, and so we're here to, to show our support and solidarity with President Drake and the entire university community. Uh, lift up in our uh, thoughts and prayers uh, the victims, this senseless tragedy, uh, and grateful for our first responders uh, that were on the scene and helped to ensure uh, that the situation did not escalate dramatically. Uh, I'm here with Chief Jacobs and Chief O'Connor. I want to send a clear message to the university and to the entire community uh, that the city of Columbus will devote whatever resources are necessary and work closely with President Drake and his team uh, to make sure that everyone feels uh, safe in this neighborhood and throughout our great city. Uh, and grateful again for Dr. Thomas and Dr. Retchen and the amazing uh, folks here and at the other uh, hospitals that are treating some of the victims here today. But I want everyone in Columbus to continue to lift up in our thoughts and prayers uh, of the victims and their families. Dr. Drake, talk to us about, um, you know, what will you say to the parents of students here? You know, I, I have two college-age students, so I know how difficult it is yes. being away from them. Talk to the parents and the families of what they can expect and, and uh, what you're doing to keep their students stay, safe and also um, talk to their emotional and social needs. Well, as uh, I'll again repeat what the mayor said, we're pleased that no one was injured uh, more seriously than they were. and. You know, we all know we live in an open society where these kinds of tragedies uh, uh, happen someplace, it seems, uh, uh, on a, a far too frequent a basis. So what we do on the campus is everything we can to make the campus safe. We uh, uh, have multiple uh, uh, trainings in place and things to make this campus as safe as it can be, and we, we're pleased with how well those work. Uh, and we're pleased with how people have responded to, to this, uh, uh, this tragedy today. And we'll continue to work with your students, our faculty and staff, to make this the safest place that we can make it. And, and that's our work on a daily basis. And I'll say that the cooperation that we have with the city, with the police, with fire, with all, makes, it, uh, makes our job that much easier. But we, we live in an unstable world, unfortunately. And so we have to continue to do our best to protect ourselves against these circumstances. Chief Jacobs, could you talk about the, the tools and the methods used to try to assist OSU police in uh, finding out a motive Certainly, there's uh, every aspect of this investigation will be mulled over. Uh, we've got our federal partners, state partners, and local um, to try to identify any 
potential motive behind this attack. Um, obviously, um, with the purposeful uh, intent that was noticed uh, driving on the sidewalk, um, we're going to look at it from the, the potential that it was planned um, with regard to um, multiple injuries. And um, we will continue to work with all of those agencies to, to try to determine what was uh, being talked about, whether it was on a device, on online, whatever it else. Uh, we'll continue to look at that. Can you tell us whether any of what you've seen so far looks like it could potentially be a terrorist act? Well, I think that we have to consider that it is uh, that possibility. Um, you know, we had an attack earlier this year with a man with a knife causing multiple injuries. So um, we're always aware that that's the potential, and we're going to continue to look at that. That's why our federal partners are, are here and helping. Can you talk about the shooting rumor, the active shooting, the initial reports that there was a shooter and not someone with well, with the amount of people that were here on campus, it was very chaotic. And I'm very proud of the students and the faculty and, and the staff at OSU to um, do exactly what they needed to do, and that was to be get someplace safe. Um, we know that people um, did not try to be a part of that scene. They tried to get away from it, which is the right thing to do. So I'm very, very pleased with the reaction of everybody. We should not ever take for granted that the best thing to do is to protect yourself. Um, so I, I do believe that um, the response was um, appropriate, and um, you know, we couldn't have asked for more, I think. There's no indication of, of a gun right now? There's no indication of a firearm being used by that particular suspect at this point in time, but we haven't searched the vehicle yet. Um, that's to be done, um, so we don't know what we'll find inside the vehicle. Any indication of multiple suspects at all? No indication for sure. Um, reports of that are, are being checked out, but we have a lot of witnesses to interview with regard to the aggravated assault that the suspect did, and we'll continue to find out whether or not there were anybody else involved. Will you and campus police step up more police presence here on campus and, and throughout the city? That'll be up to OSU PD to decide about campus. Um, we don't have any information that tells us that there's, you know, a conspiracy going on. And we understand there were at least two people taken out of the parking garage and handcuffs. Can you address who they were? Were they just bystanders, suspects? Well, we believe that people, you know, fled the scene and might have gone to their vehicles, and therefore they might have hunkered down when they realized that the police were going to search that building. Um, it was pretty obvious that we were going to do a search, and um, until we know what their motives are, their intentions are, we're going to treat them as potential suspects. Are they still be, being considered potential suspects? Not that I know of. What more can you tell us about the one suspect who's deceased now? I mean, is he a student? Was a male, female, age? Don't have enough information yet to, to release that. Can I ask a question to just clarify the number of folks who were injured? Someone was hiding and had later come to the hospital. So does that mean there's 10 injured in total? or is that person included in the nine? It's included in the nine. Thank you, Doctor. Yes. Who's lead investigator right now? Is it Columbus Police or is it Columbus Police? Police is investigating the aggravated assault caused by the suspect and the officer involved shooting. Um, very, very, as Chief Stone said, I think you might have heard the pride in his voice that we're very fortunate that that officer was on scene so quickly and was able to deal with the situation so fast. We would like to tell students to please contact their loved ones, uh, and the same with faculty and staff. They know they're safe, but their family members are probably seeing this on national media and do not know they're safe. So that would really help us out if they reach out and contact their loved ones, let them know that they're okay. Um, that would be a great assistance to us. Have you been able to reach the victims' families to let them know what happened? I believe most of the victims have probably had a chance to do so. Would you say so? I, I can't guarantee that all have, but um, most of the victims were awake and talking when they were here, and I would expect to have had some contact with their family. Can any of you speak as to when the roads are on campus, specifically 315, we'll see normal traffic flow? Again? I thought we opened that up a while ago. Back over. Yeah. What about here on campus? Um, the only thing that I think we're holding now is, is college and Woodruff and uh, 19th down the, that way. I believe Lane Avenue should be open soon if it's not already. Take one more question. Chief Stone, this might be for you. Did the officer warn the suspect that they were about to shoot? Was there any warning you know? Uh, as far as I know, he engaged the suspect and commands were not followed and the officer did what he had to do to uh, stop the threat. Other than the attacker, was anybody shot? Not that we know. Thank you. We'll have another update later. We appreciate it. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you.
Could we get a couple names of that is the, uh, ma'am? Ma ma hey, uh, that is the press conference there from President Michael Vick, who is a medical doctor himself, and Monica Mole, who is in charge of the public safety on the campus of The Ohio State University. We also heard from doctors that have treated some of the individuals at the hospitals, as well as other law enforcement in response to the individuals that were on the scene dealing with this situation when it started here this morning shortly before 10 o'clock. And so uh, just to, to recap, the, the timeline of events was very quick. 9.40, mm -hmm. this car went into this group of students. Uh, a person got out with, uh, at the time it was reported, a gun and a machete. All of the injuries appeared to be a butcher knife uh, in that car. And then by 9.55, that Buckeye alert went out. Um,